This video is intended for people who are already familiar with the darts game known as cricket. The video contains suggested strategies and tactics to improve your chances of winning the game. In the first four videos in this series, I covered tactics for winning at 01 games such as 501 and 301. In an 01 game, everyone's strategy is basically the same. Score big to get to an outshot as quickly as possible and then finish the game on a double. Tactics are the decisions you make about what to throw each dart at. And as you will have seen, if you've watched my earlier videos, the decision making process is fairly straightforward for 01 games. The game of cricket is an entirely different proposition. There are several different strategies with which you can approach the game, but your opponent's actions must be taken into account at each turn, and that might force you to change your strategy mid-game. So what follows is not a definitive set of tactics for playing the game. Instead, I offer some basic rules of thumb that should help you avoid making tactical mistakes. It will then be up to you to absorb what I'm trying to communicate and apply it to the specific positions you will find yourself in. But before we go any further, let's discuss the name cricket. In England, of course, cricket refers to an entirely different game that has nothing to do with darts. When I lived there, I knew the darts version of the game as Coach and Horses or Mickey Mouse. According to Wikipedia, it may also be called Horse and Carriage, The Game, Faldo, Beds and Bulls, Oscar Bosca, or Pointy Throwies. Personally, I've never heard any of these names used, and some of them sound rather contrived. When I played League Darts in the Netherlands, the game was called Tactics, and we played the numbers 20 down to 10 plus Bull. But for this video, I'm sticking with the name Cricket, as used in America, and I shall focus mainly on the version of the game that involves the numbers 20 down to 15 plus ball. My first rule of thumb is so obvious it hardly bears mentioning, but I will. It's simply this. Win the cork. It's a distinct advantage to throw first, so if you determine the order of play by corking, that is to say, throwing nearest the ball to start, Give it your full concentration and try to hit the ball. If you're playing in a team, always let your strongest ball thrower cork. My second rule of thumb is get ahead on points and stay ahead. Another way of saying this is if you are behind on points, do not use darts trying to close out your opponent's scoring numbers until you have gained the points lead. Now you can win without scoring a single point. To do so, you must close every number before your opponent can score. I've seen it done, but I don't recommend it as a typical strategy, and here's why. Let's suppose you threw first and hit three single twenties. Then your opponent threw and only hit two single twenties. The scoreboard looks like this as you prepare to take your second round. If you throw at 19 and hit, say, three singles, You've thrown solid darts, but your opponent is just two good shots away from levelling the game. And a third shot could put them in front. So let's rewind and throw that second turn again, but this time following the get ahead on points rule. If you hit just a single 20 with your first dart, you've gained a distinct advantage already. Even if your next two darts should fail to score, your opponent still needs a minimum of 5 19s to overtake your points total. That probably means they're going to throw all three of their darts at 19, leaving 20 open for you to score again on your next turn. But you still have two darts to throw this turn. If you're playing a friendly game, you might choose to throw at 19. There seems to be a stigma attached to racking up points when you're already ahead, so you might not want to upset your friends by scoring more. However, if this is a league or a tournament match, you should consider throwing more twenties. Pile on the points, and if it annoys your opponent, well, that's their problem. You're in it to win it. By getting ahead on points, you are reducing your opponent's options and driving their behavior. They now need at least seven nineteens to overtake you. That requires three darts so they are forced to leave 20 open for your next turn. Alternatively, 
If they decide to try and close your 21st, there's no way they can overtake you this round. To illustrate my third rule of thumb, let's suppose your opponent hit 619s to leave the board looking like this. You're ahead on points, so ideally you'd like to close the 19. The wise thing to do is to throw three fat 19s. If you throw the treble 19, your risk of slipping into the 7 or the 3 is greater than if you throw at the fat part of the number. But regardless of whether you throw at single, treble or even double, you should always follow the next rule of thumb which states that if you can't close the number you're throwing at by hitting a single with each dart in hand, then score instead. So if the first or second dart you throw at 19 misses its target, switch straight back to 20. By increasing your points total, you're forcing your opponent to throw more 19s to catch up. Rule of thumb number four is know when to switch to the bull. Most of the time, we tend to leave the bull as the last thing to play at. The number wedges are vastly bigger targets than the bull, and you will typically want to try and close them out before your opponent can score on them. However, depending on where the game stands, and on how well you're throwing, you might consider throwing at the ball earlier in the game. For example, consider throwing at the ball if you're comfortably ahead. To illustrate, I've advanced the score on the game we started earlier. You are now 59 points in front, and in this situation, single 17 should be your next shot. If you get it, you're in a strong position, and you might consider taking a couple of shots at the bull. If you miss the bull, there's always a small chance that you might hit one of the numbers you still need. But if you hit the bull, you now have a psychological advantage quite apart from the points advantage. Your opponent's position has gone from bad to very bad. They know that even if they close 16 and 15, you're still one good throw away from closing the ball. In this situation, I probably wouldn't stay on the ball. Getting that one is sufficient for now, so I'd aim at closing the 16 and the 15 next before going back to the ball. Another example where you might consider throwing at the ball early is if your opponent gives you a free round. By that I mean if your opponent fails to score with all three of their darts on their turn, it's like having a free turn for you. So if you are already in a good position, you might just try three at the ball. Even if you miss, the fact that you threw at it could unsettle your opponent. Another example, consider throwing at the ball if you're way behind. Now this is a desperation measure, but if things are looking really bad for you, consider switching to the ball even with some of the other numbers still up for grabs. For example, in this game, you're way behind on points. 15 and bull are the only numbers left for you to score on, and your opponent is scoring on 20, 19, 18, and 16. You're probably going to lose, but if you can hit two or three bulls, and maybe slop one of the numbers you need, you're still not out of the woods, but you've given your opponent something to think about. Should they try to close the bull next? Or should they mop up the 15 first? If they leave you the bull and you manage to hit another three, say, then suddenly you're ahead on points and they're starting to get twitchy. I've won more than one game from this kind of situation, so never give up. Rule of thumb number five is don't shoot at a double unless you really, really need to. In this scenario, there's no score on the board yet, but your opponent has 19 and 18 open so you need to make sure you close them this turn. I know this contradicts the get ahead, stay ahead rule discussed earlier. And if your opponent did have points on the board, then I would recommend throwing at 16, 15, or maybe even bull to try and get points. But if you are not behind on points, as in this example, it makes much more sense to try and close 19 and 18 to prevent your opponent picking up some easy points on the next round. Your first dart should go at the fat part of the 19. Now you might be tempted to think a double 18 with my second dart will leave me a shot at 16. However, when you aim at the double ring, 
there's a significant risk of throwing wide and failing to score at all. So to keep the odds in your favour, throw at the fat 18 with both your second and third darts. If you miss the 18 with your second dart, then you have one dart remaining and you still need two 18s. So now you have no option but to throw at either the double 18 or the treble 18. Even though the double is a bigger target than the treble, many players will still choose to throw at the treble in this situation, because a slip to either side of the treble gives the consolation prize of a single 18, which is better than nothing. Rule of thumb number six is don't leave your opponent a three dart outshot. In this scenario, it's your turn to throw. You're ahead on points and you only need three bulls to win the game. But before you throw at the bull, consider your opponent's position. If you fail to close the game this round, your opponent has a chance to win the game with three darts, a double bull, treble 18 and treble 15. Sure, it's a long shot, but do you want to risk it? You can defend against the three dart out possibility by scoring a single 18. That takes your point lead from 24 to 42 and means that your opponent now needs three balls, treble 18 and treble 15 to win. And of course that can't be done with three darts. You still have two darts left to throw at the ball, so you could still close the game this round, but even if you don't hit it, you know you'll be coming back for another attempt. The important point to take from this example is that a single number can be worth a ball. Before throwing, calculate the points difference and ask yourself if it's worth throwing a fat single to increase the number of balls your opponent will need. And that's it for this video. As I said at the start, there's a lot to this game and I certainly haven't covered everything that needs to be thought about as you play. But I hope I've given you a few ideas to help avoid the basic tactical mistakes new players tend to make. The rest is up to you. Shoot well.